It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Wednesday, July 13th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is horribly sad to be losing Oscar Lindblom, Russ. Terrible day. Terrible, terrible day. We'll talk about that and more moves leading up to free agency coming up now. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, once again, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with the brilliant Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on all our episodes, Flyers news. You can send us mailbag questions like we are answering today. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at gmail.com. On today's show, we are going to talk about the Oscar Lindblom buyout, other Flyers news leading up to free agency, which starts today. We'll get some more development camp updates from Russ, who was there. Then we will answer your mailbag questions. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening right now. Hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube, so drop us some likes and subscribe over there as well. Russ, I am a very sad human today, starting yesterday, uh, in the midst of seeing these beautiful images from NASA, from the James Webb Space Telescope. We were given the news that the Flyers indeed decided to buy out Oscar Lindblom, uh, it gets us about three million on the cap, which is, I guess, something. But three point three three, if you really want to know. Yeah. So I think that it's uh, obviously a move toward being able to make moves in free agency, perhaps Johnny Goudreau, perhaps somebody else. But I just think it's a missed opportunity with only one year left on his contract. We all know what he's been through. I mean, at, at what cost here, given that, you know, it's it's much better, I think, to have some more expiring contracts than to sign another big name to a, a longer term deal and have a lot more money locked up. Well, I think this is like a question you could direct to Chuck Fletcher, because if they had more cap space, they wouldn't be doing this deal, uh, the mm-hmm. buyout. So it, it was sad. We all kind of you know heard it at the same time uh, in, in the press area. Again. I'm not going to even defend it um, on a cap saving measure because he's like their second best defensive forward. And you're still going to have to make up 12 to 17 goals for not a lot of money. Cause in the end, when you get at the end of this rainbow that they're searching for, you're going to still have to bring in a lot of cheap players. And so one guy is never going to make up everything that you have to move out. It's just not, it might, and excitement, okay. But to me, it's very short-sighted. And and I feel bad for Oscar. At least he'll get another job because it's early on enough in the process that teams will take him. But in the end, this doesn't make the Flyers better, even, even with the cap maneuverability. I agree. I, I think they will miss his puck battling, that's for sure. I, and it was getting better toward the end of the season. Obviously, he's in much better shape now than he was a year ago. And I think you're right. Just a guy like him doesn't grow on trees for that kind of money. And I just feel like they owed it to him. And you're also right. And we've been talking about this, the asset management and the cap management that Chuck Fletcher has been doing has been atrocious in, and is what led to them having to do this in order to make any other moves. And it, it's just exceedingly frustrating. It's very sad. And it's it's very sweet and lovely that they're donating $100,000 to sure. a charity in his name. But it doesn't make up for it, honestly, in my opinion. It doesn't. I mean, again, the amount of assets that they're burning through or the cost of making a lot of these moves to be able to 
maneuver in this league is costing them heavily. It really is. And that's a good segue into our next conversation about James Van Riemsdyk, because, you know, word on the street is that people are asking for a first round pick in order to take on the cap hit of JVR, even though the actual salary is much lower than the cap hit uh, and wouldn't actually cost the teams that much in dollars to to take him on. Um, uh, you know, teams they just don't could want be... Them. Yeah, they don't want him. So it's a high price, including potentially could be next year's first round pick. It could be the Flyers 2024 pick. I'm sure Chuck Fletcher is like, well, you can have Florida's first rounder in 2024 because he doesn't care about giving away future picks because his seat is very, very warm right now. And so, you know, future Flyers problems are less important to him, which I think is also causing him to make some tactical errors. Yeah, but there are people there that shouldn't be greenlighting whatever, you know, is happening. They shouldn't because they're going to be stuck with it when this all fails. And and that's the the bad part about this. There's a percent chance that this could succeed. But it's a small percentage. It's a greater percentage. It's going to fail. And you have to look at both ends of it. They're not looking at the other end of it. So that's fine. So, you know, right now where they're at with JVR, if they were to do that, again, would be one of the worst things or decisions or trades or whatever term you want to use that they've ever done. Ever. One of the rumored teams on that list is the Buffalo Sabres, according to Elliot Friedman. And my God, I just think about the Flyers having given two first round picks to the Buffalo Sabres for Ristolainen and some and eventually to get rid of JVR to get somebody else. Uh, that that just hurts, honestly. <laughs> like I wouldn't even do it in fantasy hockey. No, I, I just think, again, this is just all bad asset management. And they kind of, again, uh, in the Tony D'Angelo deal, you know, again, I'm not saying if you put it in isolation, sending away what they did is horrible. I'm just saying those are assets that they could have used to do other things. And I, I, I just see Chuck Fletcher as wholly incapable of managing a cap and managing the assets that he has. Like, look, this is like the frog that's sort of getting dipped into the hot soup slowly. And, mm -hmm. and we're all watching it, you know, in the end, are there even going to be any firsts and seconds going forward for the next three years? I don't know. I mean, there's going to have three years in a row without a second at this point, unless they get one in return for what I don't know, but uh, having no second rounders for three years is brutal. I think as far as your, your farm system for the team, it, it's just, it's very disheartening at best, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah, even, I, even if you understand what they did with Oscar Lindblom and you understand why from an intellectual capacity, it's just big picture wise. None of it overall makes sense to me. No. No, but there. This is not being done in sixteen point nine. Um, this is being done in like an old fashioned uh, black and white TV. So that's you know that's as much clarity as you're getting on this. So any predictions on how it all plays out, Russ? With JVR, I believe that. And here's the now. Here's the complicating matter. This could run into August if one of their players goes to arbitration because then the buyout window, second buyout window opens up. So I'm going to go with that. That's what's going to happen. That the buyout will, will happen. No, in, that in it that won't second happen. Window? No, it'll, it'll happen, but not until the second window. So they can continue to try and look at a way to trade him, buy him out, do something else, eat half the salary, trade him, whatever. They're trying everything. They are. I just hope they don't end up going in a different direction and give up too many other assets in place of JVR in order to do what they want as far as signing a big name. Because if you have one big name and nobody else around him, like the team's not going to be good. And I just, I, I do not abide by that. Yeah. I mean, I brought that up 
today, I'm like, well, if you get Goudreau and Farabee's out, and let's say you have TK and you have Atkinson, like these are the guys that are, you know, Goudreau is going to have to feed and hope to get goals from. He's not getting the same amount of points he did last year. That Calgary top line was unbelievable. This top line for the Flyers, even though Johnny is a terrific player, will not be unbelievable. No, and I'm sure that's something he's looking at and may be looking to other teams, potentially one pretty close by in New Jersey as an option as well. But, you know, we'll we'll see how that plays out. Uh, any other big predictions for free agency? Well, um, another big prediction is I think the Rangers will end up trading for Pierre-Luc Dubois. I don't know exactly who will be in the deal. Maybe Capocaco will be in the deal and a few other things. But I sort of see that happening because um, I don't think they're going to be able to or want to pay the money for Ryan Strom. Dylan Strom isn't fast enough. Uh, Cop seems to be going to Nashville. So, they, you know, the second line center market, they, they really don't have the money for Kadri or they would be doing a lot of other things to make that right, happen. Right. So I think, you know, in the end, that may be the best way to make a deal. They do have a lot of young assets. They're going to have to burn some of them but I could see him doing it. Well, we shall see. And we will be here to talk about it on tomorrow's show. Anything big happens. We'll give you a quick reaction update on that as well. Uh, we are going to switch gears and talk about development camp up next. But first, we are going to talk about our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league review and news, including Major League Baseball and all the info leading up to next year's NFL, NBA and NHL seasons. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports and more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts and news this season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to check in all check in on all your favorite sports events including MMA, tennis, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So day two of development camp, and they did a bunch of different activities. Mm. Russ, you were there. What were your impressions of today's drills? Yeah, so um, I watched more of the defensive side today. They were a little more active. Uh, I saw Hunter McDonald do really well offensively in that and with the passing and, um, they would have a drill where they would pass to each other and then somebody would eventually shoot. He never missed the net. Like he's got a really great shot. And so that's, that's something, uh, I thought that, you know, Ronnie Adder looked good. Uh, the worry that I have is Ronnie Adder still does not look NHL fast. And mm -hmm. I see a path where they're going to put Rodney Adder in the starting lineup this year because of his well, size. Mm -hmm. And here's the bonus. Based on what people were telling me that was spoken yesterday, maybe as a defensive defenseman. Lord. <laughs> I mean, that is certainly not his strong suit. No. We'll say that is not what he's built for. That's not what he works but towards he's big. At, at all. But he is a big guy. That's the thing. And, you know, Shell Samuelson talked about him a little bit in the post-skate media availability. And uh, he emphasized that strength and him getting bigger. But I, I do think that changing who he is as a defenseman is a big mistake with a guy like Ronnie Adderd, who is kind of borderline. You have to play to his strengths. Otherwise it's not going to be successful. The only way to reinvent his game is to spend a lot of time in the AHL first in order mm -hmm. to do it. And they don't have the flexibility to do that. The flyers are going to probably need to have him, if not as the seventh defenseman, he may end up being a bottom pairing guy, at least to start the season, depending on how this whole roster plays out. But changing who he is as a defenseman is a huge mistake, in my humble opinion, Russ. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, like, Torts will fall back on. I told you he always changes 
some defenseman on his team, whether it's different side, different role. Sure. And he, did that, he did that with the Rangers with Anton Stroman, who was largely an offensive defenseman, and it worked out. But Anton Stroman was already a many year NHL veteran. Correct. So that's, you know, that's the difference here. Uh, I do want to point out Devin Kaplan's agility looked good, although he knows he has to work on it. But, and he's we're talking about turns and edges and things like that. But actually, you know, I think he was showing his agility pretty well. He, um, he showed a backhand that I've never seen him use. So that was good. But again, I didn't see every game he played this year. So that, uh, that apparently he also took a puck to the face and had to like glue it shut. Yeah, already. he just put glue on it. I mean, <laughs> that's what you do these days, right? So if you if your face splits open because a puck hits it, you just glue it. Just glue it. Right. <laughs> like that would that be the, be the of, title of this episode is just glue it. That would be the end of dead camp for Russ. Russ would go home and now <laughs> I would turn on like Stranger Things that I haven't finished yet, and dead camp is over. Right. But not for this well, guy. He was he was laughing. He laughed about it. That's hockey, man. Gotta love it. I, I do appreciate though that he is very self-aware in terms of his skating yes. and exactly what he needs to work on, like from the specific part of his foot and edges. I think that's really important going into the rest of this summer. And I did ask him if he ever beat Cutter Galche in a game of pig in the shooting room at the <laughs> NTDP, and he said no. But his well, shot's pretty good. It's not like yeah. Cutter, but it's pretty good. And that I was honest. That it was, was nice honest. and honest. Sometimes these guys lie. You have to ask them and see. Because if he told the tall tale, then Cutter can come back. You know, uh -huh. you know where I was going with that. Anyhow, um, you know, the Brzezinski's are an interesting breed. These guys are overachievers. And the one the Flyers have is the same thing. He had a really good day. He scored the best goal in camp a short side goal that everybody stick tapped. And I'm just looking up his name. Nice. I'm going to get his brother's name. Bryce. Mixed up. So this is Bryce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he really looked good. His shot looked good. His skating looked good. So that was something where, you know, there is always people that will tell you there's nothing to really learn here at camp. And, you know, it's a lot of nothing. If you don't focus on the right things, I guess that's true. I always could find things. So I, I will always disagree with that. Um, as far as Zade Wisdom, now, he looks good. He looks good shooting. He looks good around the net. I know, although his skating seems improved, he's fallen down e each day of camp, and I don't know if he's taken after, after Scott Hartnell or does he just need, like, skate sharpening? I don't know. Right. But he's fallen the last two days. So hopefully somebody looks at that so they can help him out with that. You was know, he other... falling on like quick transitions or was just it quick, just... just a quick cut? Yeah. Got it. He's, he's falling at quick cuts and that's what made me think it could be his, his, skate his skates. Blade. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Who else was I watching today? Alex Bump, you know, had a couple of good moments. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Tuamala look good. Tuamala, his um, his skating looks good. His cuts are good. Again, none of this matters. All that matters is the team that he's going to go play in in Finland, because Sammy Kapanen knows Ole Jokinen, the hope is he'll play more games. Like That's a lot of things that they're counting on now, so they at least have more in place than last year. So there's mm -hmm. that. So there's some hope there. Ty Murchison looked pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, he, when they were working on cornering, you know, when defensemen are sort of working, getting the puck in the, yep. in the corners and you, you skate a certain way to kind of get the puck around there and you're holding on to it, looked really good doing that. And, you know, and this is a guy they just drafted, 16. Yeah, he was one of the picks from last year. Right. Not, yeah, 2021, sorry. 6'2", and, you know, I thought that was a pretty good defensive measure that I think largely went unknown, but I appreciated it. So there was that too. Uh, somebody else uh, who was there, it was good to hear from is Sam Erson and get an update on him. And as far as his injury mm -hmm. goes, and uh, I remember this past season, you know, where he came back and then got re-injured um, and had to miss the rest of the season. 
it was good to see that again, he was pretty honest with where he's at. He said he wasn't at a hundred percent yet, but he feels better and it's good to get back on the ice. And we've been talking about how, as far as the goalie depth in the organization, they're really going to have to count on him to be one of the Phantoms guys, I think. And so uh, getting him back to a hundred percent is really important. Yeah. So I put up some videos too on Instagram and such. People could check them out. There was an interesting uh, defensive battle that they were doing with two nets that was like in tight. So, you know, there's some, you know, a little bit of physicality going on there. That was fun. But l- let's talk about Cam York. I mean, he's obviously on the ice. He looks fine. Uh, right. There was a belief that he volunteered to be in this camp. And then he sort of set everybody straight real quick. By saying no, right, I was to be here, and what I had told everybody was is that my experience with all these NTP guys is you ask them to do something, they'll do it. So I don't think it's a big deal that he didn't volunteer. I just don't know why it was thought that he was volunteering, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and nobody said that he volunteered. Really, that was in any authority to say so. So it wasn't really a surprise that he was. Yeah, like I said, it was a belief going around the media room. Interesting. Well, we have more of development camp this week. We'll be talking about that as it progresses toward their little uh, three-on-three tournament at the end of the week. And uh, we will be getting to your mailbag questions coming up next. We've got some Tony D'Angelo, some cat management, so much to get to. But first, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer? They're going to choose the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, from expert mechanics to beginner do-it-yourselfers. They have everything you could need, from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Whatever you need from your car, you'll be able to find it and get your car in shape. So go to rockauto.com right now. You can see all the parts available for your car or truck. And then write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know we sent you Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Getting to your questions in our mailbag here. The first one is a question that I have too. So thank you, Noah, from Twitter for asking. He wants to know, do you think the D'Angelo trade was made in an effort to give the Flyers a broad street bully identity? If not, how does this trade contribute to our identity struggles? Uh, It doesn't contribute to the identity struggle. It's just, how can we get somebody to help the power play? And they did. Yeah, I think you're right. And we talked about this yesterday. Uh, uh, when we were initially talking about the trade as well, or on uh, Monday show, that is, and it really doesn't contribute to any changed identity that Chuck Fletcher has been talking about in term accountability and and all of these other things. He he seems to go counter to that, uh, which is a, a little puzzling, I think. But at the same time, you know, it does solve a particular problem on the ice as far as offensive defensemen go and the power play. And it's as simple as that. And Chuck Fletcher is just willing to deal with kind of it muddying the water and other aspects in order to gain those things. And we'll just have to see how it plays out. Right. Yeah. Uh, Andrew also has a question about Tony D'Angelo as far as his defensive game wants to know, is it at least serviceable? And do you see him on the top pairing with Provorov? I mean, it's debatable whether it's serviceable. Some people like we were chatting about it today said it is. I say it's really below average, but I think Brendan Moore was willing to put up with it because he had Jacob Slavin who could shoulder a lot. you know, if the Flyers trade Ivan Provorov for cap space, I don't know who's going to shoulder it 
with with him is it going to be Risto? I mean, he's not quite Jacob Slavin. So, you know, I I think he's still weak defensively. His puck retrieval is pretty good. So that's at least something where, because his skating is excellent. So you could right. do something with that. Uh, serviceable? Sure, why not? Yeah, I go back and forth on this. I think that for me, having John Tortorella and having a defensive minded structure, I think is going to improve everybody marginally. I'm not saying there'll be vast improvements with everybody, but the system that he's going to put in place is going to be defensively focused. So I think we'll get a little bit more out of Tony D'Angelo than we might have otherwise uh, with a different coach. But uh, I think he's still below average, and the pairing is going to have a huge impact on his performance defensively. And I just hope the coaches can uh, put together pairs that make sense and kind of hide some of those flaws. (laughs) All right. A huge question related to potentially signing Johnny Goudreau. And this came from a Devils fan on YouTube. And Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they want to get Goudreau for the Devils when they asked it. But how do the Flyers create $10 in cap space for Johnny Goudreau when the current cap space is about... $3 $3 million now with the Oscar Lindblom buyout. Can they create that much space? Sure. Um, they could get close to it just by trading that little old first-round pick and JVR. Then they get closer. That's, you know, it's not a full seven. I think it's like four or five after the signing bonus, something like that. So so there's that. And then all you have to do is get rid of Konechny or Provorov. And then you can do it. It's easy. Yeah, I just wonder if they're going to have to get rid of both Konechny and Provorov in order to do it and not count on that JVR cap space. So, just, I, just so I'm very nervous about that. Yeah, and just so the the viewer understands, that was me being flippant, but that's how they can do it. Yeah, it, it's very unlikely. But again, in this world, anything is possible, right, with hockey men. So we will see how that goes and um i think you know there could be some other names out there as well as far as a big name that isn't johnny goudreau so well i think they if they can't get goudreau they'll go after nazim Kadri, but he's only going to be about a million bucks a year cheaper yeah i don't i don't know if it'll be worth it um, as far as the impact, which would which will be good, but not as good as Johnny Gaudreau, I think. Right. All right. Last question. Uh, the Premier Hockey Federation announced expansion to Montreal for this upcoming season. That's the uh, Women's Pro League. Any shot at a women's team in Philadelphia? Okay. So I'm going to go way back in the way back machine to the to the outdoor game when they played in the outdoor game, and there was a feeling that there would be a Philly team and it would play in Voorhees to start. I haven't heard anything about it since. I think that in the PHF, it's less likely just because of the geography of the existing teams right now and the direction they seem to be going in um, adding this team in Montreal. I think another Midwestern team is the likely next move, whether it's Chicago or Detroit, to kind of pair up distance-wise with the team in Minnesota. Uh, But the PWHPA, which is a different group of women's hockey players with some of the elite Olympians, have been talking about getting a league going themselves. Yeah, how's Um, that schedule going? Have you gotten it yet? The rumor is that it will be announced early next year. And I do think that should that come to fruition, the chances of Philly getting a team in it are much higher than with the PHF. Because I think they'll want to have some different cities. Okay. Than the other league. So early next year. So that's two yes. years later than they stated originally. Yes. But, you know, they're doing it on their own time with okay. their own philosophy. Right. And I just want know, to make sure I have it right in my head. That's all. Yeah, you do. But they're just doing it slow and steady and making sure they have the kind of funding they want and the structure they want. And they're willing okay. to wait. So. All right. Wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing just thinking about Oscar Lindblom one of the best parts of 
of having him on the team has been the little fun and games that he and Joel Farabee have during warmups. And um, a user on Twitter posted a, a cute little video of one of their interactions where they look like they're going to have a sword fight. And it's always a delight every time. And apparently Joel Farabee was um, in the rink today, just like in the corner watching. Yes, he was. He was. All right, that will wrap things up for today's show. We will be back again tomorrow. We're going to talk about free agency so far. Uh, keep track of our Twitter account, and we will be posting any reactions we have to any additional moves since our recording of this episode. Plus, we will do a little bit of a deeper dive into our new prospect, Alex Bump. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send us in your mailbag questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers or email us at LockdownFlyers at gmail.com. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. It's at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Our experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Have a great day, everyone.